Talk about the Niner O-line because it's a major subplot going into this thing. Left to right, what do you think their best line is? If everybody's healthy and you can pick your line left to right, obviously you got Trent Williams, a left tackle. Right. But left guard, center, right guard, right tackle. In your ideal world, week one against the Bears, what do you think their best line is? And I bring it up because today there was a report that Nick Sakel, the rookie out of Fordham, was getting some run in Minnesota in the practices with the Vikings at he center. Was third string, though, right? He's center. Yeah, he's the third string. I mean, there's Jake Brendel. There's da- there's Daniel Brunskill. Brunskill's hurt. hurt I kind of like Poe. I, I think when I think when uh, the kid from Mercer sets his feet, fires his hands, he gives no ground as a pass rusher. And he, I know he's short and compact, but man, he's quick and he's strong and he's powerful and he moves people in the run game. Do you think, do you think like they can prep up. him to play center though on such a short notice? I mean, you know, it's it's interesting because John Lynch was asked about it, Vish, about you know he had the the rookie the a rookie playing center, and I think him or Shanahan said, hey. Look, in our system, we don't put so much on the center, you know, as far as a, it's not as much of a cerebral position as some other teams. Right. No, but but the, he did say that. But I, what I'm asking more and more is it's not about being cerebral, right? Poe hasn't played center in camp. Here we no, are, he has not. He's, he's played guard. The season starts September 11th. The guy is learning how to play guard. Can you get him ready to play center by September 11th? I would say no. Yeah. Yeah, but what do you think of of like Z- maybe Zakel? Because Zakel, I'll say this: Zakel blocks through the whistle. I mean, he is he's tenacious. He plays kind of angry. He's a bigger bodied guy with a lot of upper body strength. You can see it. Um, I, I'd be intrigued to see what he looks like at center because yeah. I'm not that impressed by Brunskill or by Brendel. Yeah, I, I think Brunskill is an okay player. I'm not sure about Brendel, right? I don't get to watch practice and all of that, and you can't really say something about a guy playing, you know, 20 snaps in preseason when Kenny Clark's not playing. It's a different animal when you're playing Green Bay and 97 is lined up over the center. You saw what right. he did to Alex Mack in week three. It's an absolute beast. But, um, I mean, Trent Williams, obviously, he's one of the best players in the NFL. He starts at left tackle. I think Banks is solid. I know Banks has struggled, I guess, in one-on-ones, but everything we've seen in five out of fives, he seems to move well in the run game, and he seems to be clean. Nothing special in the pass protection, but gets the job done. Um, I think for now it seems Brendel is kind of the lead dog at center, so I'd have to assume because I don't have much exposure watching these guys besides Brunskill in 2020 that that's they're just doing what's best. I think Burford is obviously he's a, he's a steal. I think he's a good player at right guard already. He plays a little bit like a veteran, in fact, for, you know, a rookie fourth round pick. And then McGlinchey obviously starts himself because Justin School is not very good at all. I think I don't think he's going to make this team. And then Colton McKivitz is, you know, not athletic enough in pass protection as an NFL right tackle to be trusted on an island against passers. But I'll say this about the offensive line, Larry. I think that the outlook of this offensive line is going to change because I think Shanahan is going to do two things. One, when they start game planning, Shanahan is going to have a really good plan on how he's going to, you know, scheme his protection against pass rushes, right? He's going to have a good plan how he's going to use the back, how he's going to use the tight end, just how they're going to block it in general. They always have a good plan. I mean, look at how they've handled Aaron Donald. There's people who say Daniel Brunskill is Aaron Donald's daddy. You know, Kyle Shanahan just has a really, (laughs) really good plan on how they go after Aaron Donald every single time. They just have a really good feel on how to give him trouble by giving him a variety of different looks, blocking him from a variety of different angles with a bunch of different guys. It's about the plan. The second thing is the run game, right? Uh, I do think, I think you and I are in the same boat. We talked about it with the triple option stuff. This is going to be a run heavy football team. They're going to run the football a lot. They're going to run the football with a lot of variety. I think that misdirection, that variety and the continuity at the offensive line combined with having Kittle next to them, having use check, they're going to be a good group in the run game. And that's going to allow the play action, Shanahan's genius, Shanahan's genius with the drop back game and Lance's movement in the pocket, which should be miles better than Garoppolo's theoretically. I think all of that is going to combine where this, I think this offensive line is going to average out to be an average unit. And here's my thing with offensive lines on the whole in the NFL, right? I think that we're noticing, and I think the Bengals are the example of this from last year. You have a weapon on the outside, you no longer really need your offensive line 
to protect in that, you know, consistently all game where they dominate the pass rush. Because one, the quarterback's not getting hit the same way they used to be. I mean, they're more getting tagged before if somebody got hit, you know, nine times, got sacked nine times like Joe Burrow did in the divisional round. They probably, the backup quarterback probably finished the game because they would have killed the quarterback by then. But that's no longer happening, right? So the quarterback is not getting killed. The offensive line play across the league, I mean, I would say there's only three or four good offensive lines, and even those three or four good offensive lines will get their butts kicked by the best defensive lines in the NFL. You combine that, the league is so spread out, you're able to get the ball out to weapons, and you know you have guys like Jamar Chase, Debo, Tyreek Hill, who take in, can take screens, 80 yards for touchdowns. You take all of this together, and you take it with the fact that quarterbacks are as good as hand, at handling the free rushers ever. I mean, Burrow, Mahomes, Josh Allen, all these guys playing empty so much of the time. And when you're playing in empty, a lot of the times you're just having basic five-man protections, which means the quarterback is responsible for the sixth and the seventh guy on the line of scrimmage often in the protection. And they have to make free rushers miss, and they have to you know, be fast with their processing with their brain. You combine all of that and where the modern NFL is – I think this offensive line is more than fine. I think you talk about Shanahan's ability to protect them. You talk about where the NFL is. You talk about how good this defense is. You talk about the run game. You talk about how much the quarterback should be better in these situations. I mean, both mentally, I mean, Lance should be theoretically, I mean, by all accounts, he's just mentally more gifted and has better aptitude towards the game than Garoppolo. So you would assume that mentally he'll handle pressure better than Garoppolo ever did. Physically, he's much more well-equipped to handle pressure than Garoppolo ever did. I don't think this offensive line is as much of a problem as people think.